25th anniversary of the Pokhran 2. So Pokhran 2, another very important achievement for India, right? We became uh, uh, a nuclear, you know, independent country for, as compared to others. We had our own autonomy. We could showcase that we are we are having the strength, right? So that is the Pokhran 2. So uh, what exactly is the Pokhran? It was a series of five nuclear bomb blast, bomb test, right? Explosion that were conducted in 1998, all right, in Rajasthan, right? Then uh, this uh, this was named as uh, Operation Shakti. That can be asked. What was the name of Pokhran One? That is something you have to remember. Pokhran One, Smiling Buddha. Okay, this can be uh, asked as what? This can be asked as a match. The following, right? So that is there. The first Pokhran, which is Pokhran One, was no code named as Smiling Buddha. That is something we have to understand. And you know uh, the fusion and the fusion uh, bombs which uh, were uh, tested. So we have to understand about the fusion and the fusion processes as well in a very very simple manner, right? So now let us let us have a look at fusion. So what is happening? First thing that we have to understand that you know one nuclei, one one atom is going to get divided into two. That is number one, and it is going to release energy. This energy is known as the fission energy, and this can be used, uh, let's say, in a nuclear bomb, or you know, even to produce electricity or any kind of. Uh, it can be used for any form, right? It's an it's a form of energy. It can be used, right? That is number one. So that is there. In fusion, very normal thing, very in very simple manner. What is happening in fusion? So, what is happening in fusion is that uh, two smaller nuclei are coming together, right? And they are going to form a larger nuclei. Plus, they will also release a energy, right? And this energy again can be used for any any purpose for producing electricity or anything, right? Now. What is the difference? Like what is what what is like what is what are more details about it? So in fusion, first of all, to bring these uh, atoms together, bring these things together, you need energy, isn't it? You need the initial energy. This initial energy in fusion comes from a smaller fission reaction. Okay, a smaller fission reaction. So small fission reaction takes place. This produces energy, and because of this energy, then other nuclei are being, uh, you know, forced to come together and form this thing, and then fusion energy. So fusion energy is way more than the fission energy, is multiple times more than the fission energy, and that is why a very stable fusion technology has still not been developed properly. We are working on it, and various countries are working on it. But you know, a very stable one, which is you know sustainable uh, for a long time, this has still not come up, right? So that is there. In the fission, what happens is that you know, let's uh, when when uh, when this particular atom breaks into two, right? And then energy and also obviously in the form of neutrons is being released. Now this neutron will again go and hit another atom of this kind, and it will start breaking. So it's a kind of cyclic process, which you know, which uh, which steps into. There's a there's a cycle going on. The atoms are getting created, getting hit. Then again, atoms are getting created. Neutrons are getting created. Then again, they're hitting the other atoms, right? And in this manner, fission energy is going on. Same thing is happening over here, right? In this uh, again, a fission reaction will take place, and then this particular energy which is being released, it will be used to go for the fusion thing. So in very basic, in very simple terms, this is what is known as the fission and the fusion technologies, right? That is something we have understood. Now let's move forward. Okay, so a uh, Pokhran one and its aftermath. Obviously, you know, uh, no none of the countries would want other countries to get stronger, right? And that is that was the reaction even India had from other countries when it tested its first nuclear test in 1974. All right, so in 1974 is the date for Pokhran one, right? Uh, it was a nuclear test at Pokhran, which is uh, uh, which is uh, which was also known as the Smiling Buddha, as we have seen that, right? And uh, this you know, this was a peaceful nuclear explosion. It was nothing like that. But then U.S. and other countries retaliated, right? They all they were also supporting Pakistan despite the concern that you know its nuclear capabilities can be uh, misused by the terrorist organizations over there, right? And in and in response to India's nuclear test, nuclear supplier group was formed of 48 countries, 
even today india is not part of this particular nsg right that is there so 48 countries so they came together that you know whatever nuclear technology will be there whatever nuclear raw materials will be there all these things will not be shared without you know uh, the consent of these uh, these countries so these countries were there which, which had the majority of the uh, uh, nuclear technologies and nuclear raw materials right so they would they started uh, having this particular rules and regulations right so but india obviously has not uh, not joined nsg as of now uh, right and that is there with the help of this particular pokhran and its aftermath that is something which you can read now again pokhran 2 was there and again india had the uh, aftermath the significance it had right and one of the most important thing was the india's nuclear doctrine so what are the components of india's nuclear doctrine is something that we have, we will see in this particular topic okay so this particular thing pokhran 2 the second test made india uh real self uh, self reliable right self reliance of india in terms of nuclear dimensions credible nuclear deterrence all right what was the geopolitics uh, points related to geopolitics uh so the countries profile you know the other south asian countries started respecting india that now we have a very strong country which can support us right so in that terms also the country's strategic uh, response also improved the strategic status of uh, india also improved in terms of that right but the world has its reaction had its reaction economic sanctions were there from countries like japan united states right and it was it took a long time uh, uh, since after that with these sanctions were lifted up right and then uh, debates on non proliferation disarmament all went on right so today we have various treaties we have various agreements which we'll see uh, in the coming uh, time that you know uh, so many things was launched to ensure that world does not go towards this nuclear warfare thing right and uh, then there was the most important thing is the emergence of the india's nuclear doctrine so what are the various components of india's nuclear doctrine the first thing is that it is uh, you know uh, it was for the peaceful purpose right second thing is that india is only going for credible minimum deterrence cmd credible minimum deterrence okay third thing is that no first use policy okay no first use policy so what is the meaning of this what is the meaning of no first use policy so no first use uh, policy would mean that you know uh, india will not be the first country which will attack the other country with the help of nuclear weapons that is the that is a thing okay so that is there Na then we have uh, the other other thing is that non use against the non nuclear weapon states so if we are fighting if we are into some kind of uh, you know a fight or war with the non nuclear state we will not attack the, uh, that nuclear state uh, that state with the help of nuclear weapons but but in case that particular non nuclear state is using the nuclear powers of other state we will definitely uh, reply back in a very uh, strong manner all right the second uh, the, uh, the fourth one is a retaliation to a nuclear attack so india india said that once there is a nuclear attack on india the retaliation which india will have will be unexplainable will be huge so we will not you know we will not uh, uh, adhere to any standards then the retaliation will be very very huge right that is what india has said but there is slight conflict here because india says that we are developing our nuclear program for credible minimum deterrence all right credible minimum deterrence now credible minimum deterrence means they, we will not have so much of nuclear strength right but then to retaliate in the most uh, strongest manner we will definitely have to have uh, a more and more nuclear power right so there is some kind of conflict over there right then the most important thing command and control right so it, it is a very important one because you know in command and control it says that the command the whosoever is going to you know give the final verdict on the nuclear attack will be under the civilians right so it it has two components one is the political component which is headed by the prime minister and another is headed by the nsa that we have right national security advisor so uh, these things are there and under these two the entire nuclear command authority is going to be there okay so we will have we will develop uh, you know sufficient uh, nuclear power so that we can survive we can survive and retaliate back okay it will be under civilian control and we do believe in disarmament and arms control that is something which india has consistently said okay then we have the then we will have a regular review okay of the nuclear capabilities that we have so these things are there in the india's nuclear doctrine so there are various conventions and treaties which will become important from the exams perspective which you have to understand for example we have the npt the non proliferation treaty okay so it prevents the spread of nuclear weapons and promote disarmament right but india of course is not part of it okay india pakistan israel these are not part of it now then we have the another very important treaty which is comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty 
so it you know it bans all the nuclear detonation for both civilian and the military purposes very important point for both civilian and military purposes right again it is not yet in force and india has not signed it not ratified it right it has not it, india is still not the part of it then we have the treaty on prohibition of nuclear weapons right so this is already in force since january 2021 but you know major nuclear states for example united states or you know countries like india and all these things they are not part of it right so that is this is again you know banning the nuclear weapon including development testing production and procession okay then we have another one which is fissile material cut off treaty this is still in under negotiation and you know it it prohibits the production of fissile material which is there which is used for the nuclear systems all right that is there now we have various um, uh, export regime uh, export export control regimes right so again this becomes very important uh, from the exams perspective the first one most important one is the nsg that we have talked about nuclear suppliers group right it controls the nuclear related exports okay and uh, of course uh, 48 members uh, states are there and india is not part of it right then we have the mtcr which india is part of since 2016 right it is there uh, restrictive uh, prol proliferation of missiles and drone technology capable of carrying specific payload so beyond a, a particular uh, limit beyond a particular range uh, it puts certain restrictions all right then we have the vasinar agreement so keyword to understand over here is the dual use goods so it, it uh, you know it prohibits or you know promotes transparent export of uh, dual use goods so for example nuclear weapon or some kind of nuclear technology it can be used for the production of uh, electricity as well as for the production of, for the production of nuclear weapons so it, it tries to prohibit that okay then there are 42 participating states india definitely is a member then we have the australia group over here the keyword is the chemical and the biological weapons it is trying to pre uh, prevent that spread okay india is again part of it so these are the things most important things under the nuclear dimension which we, which you have to study and which can be important from the exams perspective